أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أبي الأبد برادرز السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين always and forever begin with the praise the thanks of Allah and ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah we are witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah and we send our love greetings salutations so beloved Nabi Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to his pious and pure family to his companions and all those who follow his sunnah until the end of time may Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless us to be amongst them آمين آمين والحمد لله Today's topic, subhanAllah, is about the issue of hijab. And it is more than just about the hijab, it's about the jihad of the hijab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya Bani Adam, O oh, children of Adam, قَدْ أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ لِبَاسًا يُوَارِي سَوْآتِكُمْ وَرِيشًا Allah says, I have sent down before, oh, upon you, O oh, children of Adam, clothing, so that you may conceal your nakedness, your private parts, and as an adornment to beautify you. Your clothing elevates you. وَلِبَاسُ التَّقْوَى ذَلِكَ خَيْرِ And then Allah says, But the best of all covering is the covering oneself with taqwa. To have a mindset of taqwa and modesty. ذَلِكُمْ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَذَّكَرُونَ Allah says, This is better for you and it's of the signs and the symbols of Allah. It's for people who remember and understand. I don't know if you are following the news, you should be, that our sisters in India are being persecuted in certain states in India where... They are being deprived from getting their education because of hijab. You can't attend university, you can't attend school, you can't be a teacher if you want to wear hijab. And I think it's important terminologies, many of the men here, we don't maybe know what is hijab. And For all intents and purposes, hijab means duki. Hijab is the head covering. Niqab is the face covering. The, you're all wearing niqab now. Right? Niqab is what you cover your face. Hijab is what we call here in Cape Town a duki or a scarf, the head covering. And of course, burqa is a much longer kind of, where it not only covers your head, but it goes all the way down basically um, um, to half of your body. And abaya, of course, as we know, is the outer garment. Now, we're not talking about the face veil. The face veil, yes, is an issue of ikhtilaf, whether a woman should wear it or not. But the duki, the scarf, to prevent our sisters from wearing it and depriving them of education is a type of persecution. And this... It's just the next chapter in this ongoing persecution against our, our traditions, our morals, our religion, and against and our sisters. In fact, we know that before COVID, Europe was on a war path against the hijab. France was the first country in the Western world in 20, 2011 to ban a woman from wearing the niqab and to put restrictions on the veil subhanallah a country which is proudly secular where a woman can wear anything or nothing the government is dictating what a woman can choose her wardrobe choices the government is dictating her wardrobe choices and once france you know brought in this law many many countries and states across europe almost every european country institutioned Cert some kind of laws, either banning the hijab, banning the niqab, fining Muslim women from wearing it, or restricting Muslim women. Subhanallah, you even have, you know, even things like the Burkini, a lady wants to swim, she wants to go to the beach, but she wants to dress modestly. This is also illegal. This is always also illegal, subhanallah, in the Western world. And what's amazing, you know, you read up the commentators. They say, in the whole of France, 70 million people, there's only about 2,000 Muslim women that wears the niqab. Only 2,000 women. But the entire parliament, all the politicians, all the parties are debating this issue. Experts here and there debating this issue. The whole Europe has conferences to debate this issue. Deciding for our sisters what they can and can't wear and what rights will be taken from them if they don't obey. And in all these conferences and debates and discussions, you won't find a single hijabi woman asked, what is it that you want? What is it that you want to wear? You tell us your opinion in the Western world where you have the freedom and the right to do anything you want. Not once do they ask our sisters, what is it that you want? So we must ask a question. Why? Why is Europe and, why are these, and, and India as well going down this trajectory? Why would they go to war? Against a piece of, piece of clothing. Would they go to war against covering your head? What is the issue? What's the big deal about it? Because everyone understands, and this is for us as Muslims, and our sisters, when you, talk, when you look at your dukkhi now, it's not just a dukkhi. 
Because this is a war of ideologies. This is a war on many, many fronts. And it didn't start now. I'm plagiarizing very much from a, a lecture that Sheikh Yasir Qadi gave a few days ago, where he said that if you look at this issue, if you look at this issue, the colonizers, when they entered Muslim lands, part of their, part of their uh, uh, a mission to subjugate its people was to remove its identity, to force you to speak their language, like we're doing now, to dress like them, to take their names even, and of course their religion and all of that. And one of the things they detested immensely was the hijab. So this uh, 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 very famous uh, post-colonial writer, uh, Franz Fanon, he was a psychiatrist. He worked for the French army when France, over 100 years, colonized Algeria. So he was with the French army as a psychiatrist for the French soldiers. And as he got involved, he turned against the French and joined the resistance against them, and he wrote books against the French. And when he came to the issue of hijab, he says, the, the generals in Algeria, look at the statement they said, if you want to destroy the structure of Algerian society, you want to beat these people, its capacity for, if you want to stop their resistance, we must first of all conquer the women. This is not, this is the generals of the French army. We must go and find them behind their veils where they hide themselves and in the houses where the men keep them out of sight. In another statement he made, the same uh, psychiatrist, he wrote, the, the niqab and the hijab, it frustrates the colonizers because they can see, they can see us, but we can't see them. And it is a symbol of resistance against us, our way of life. And so if we say, is this just about a duki? Is it just about a duki, a headscarf, that the whole world is drawn into a battle? We say it's not about a duki. It is about one dominant culture trying to dictate to an inferior culture what you will wear and what you will dress. You will look like us and you will wear what we say you can wear. It is a part of the narrative that you native people don't know how to, to wear clothing. When they came to our lands, we were uncivilized because we were naked. Now we're uncivilized because we're not naked like them, subhanAllah. Think about that. It is also a type of subjugation and humiliation. We will tell your women and your daughters what to wear. We will take from them their modesty, even if against their will. You know, this is from Fir'aun. What did Allah say about Fir'aun? يُذَبِّحُونَ أَبَنَاكُمْ They killed the boys, the men. وَيَسْتَحْيِينِ سَانَكُمْ They left the women alive. Why? Left them alive for what? To use them and abuse them. For a lady, there's something worse than, than death. And this is a kind of humiliation. We will take on your, the, 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 the most intimate area of your women and there's nothing you can do. It's part of that colonial mindset. The same people that invaded our lands for 300 years that forcefully remove hijab with a gun are the same ones telling you now and telling you sister, it's better for you take it off in your name and in the rights for women's rights. The same people. You don't think they care about our sisters? You think they really care after they bombed our lands that they're here to liberate our women? This is also a battle on, as I said, identity, on civilization, on society. Many of the other norms, many of the other cultures have sort of dissolved within this Western secularism. Islam still holds its ground. Islam still maintains its identity, what it means to be a Muslim. And there's no, subhanAllah, no ulama with guns forcing you to dress a certain way, forcing you to come to the masjid. You all come out of your own free will. And it's something they can't understand. And they hate that we choose our Islam in spite of their continuous bombardment of their ideology, their bombardment of their logos and their symbols. We reject those things and we continue to wear what our Sharia tells us to wear. It is also an attack. And this is actually an attack on women and the rights of women. So subhanAllah, you know, they will tell you that this is to liberate our sisters. This is to save you from a backward way. It's not that the hijab is backward. Your religion is backward. Your culture is backward. Your sharia is backward. That is what is at stake here. That if you want to be a liberated, successful woman, if you want to be a, a powerful woman, get rid of Islam. Then you will be an enlightened woman. That you must choose between the backwardness of Islam or the modern modernity of, of, of Western civilization. That is the narrative they want. We reject that. We say Islam gives us strength. That hijab gives me power. Like that psychiatrist said, the hijab, it's not a symbol of being uh, um, uh, oppressed. Rather, to the French, it's a symbol of resistance. They can't take it off them. 
They will, they will stand against the, the mightiest army in the world. You can't take my hijab from me. It is about a country telling our ladies, you don't know what's right for you. You can't even choose your own wardrobe. We will tell you. And you will wear what we tell you to wear. This is also, most importantly, it is a tack on religion. Most of the religions of the world, sadly, have basically succumbed to Western secularism. This is the dominant religion of the world, Western secularism, where religion is something you keep in your house privately or you give it up altogether. If you want to be religious, don't bring it in the street. Don't bring it into business. Don't bring it in the public arena, in the malls. No. You are only religious in your masjid, in your church, and at home. We say no. Allah is the Lord in my house, in my church, in my masjid, at work, at canal walk. That is the same Allah. The Sharia applies to me everywhere. And that law is above any other law that you give me. And my religion is part of my identity first and foremost. And they hate to see religion being practiced. They hate to see. Well, subhanAllah, what, what threat is there for me wearing, a lady wearing a hijab? In many countries, it's, har it's illegal for a masjid to have a minarat. You must, it mustn't look like a mosque. Why? How does this hurt you? Because to show any kind of religiosity, that there is a Lord above you, above the government, above humanity, that there is something greater than you, this goes against their fundamental, that they are the Rabbul, they are Rabbul, Rabbukum al-A'la, like Fir'aun, Ana Rabbukum al-A'la, I am the Lord Most High. And so this, sisters, it's not just about the duki. It's not just about your scarf. It is about a symbol of resistance against colonization, against subjugation. It is also a symbol to show Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. Your laws mean nothing. Allahu Akbar. And so this saga also shows to us the hypocrisy. This, this subhanAllah, a hijab, it brings in politics and world uh, 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 wars. It shows you the hypocrisy of the Western world. They say, we will save you and liberate your lands. And how do they do that? By bombing it to pieces. What did they do to Afghanistan? Bombing it to pieces. They will give you the freedom to choose. America came, spent trillions, they left. The same women that were wearing hijab, not one of them took it off. 99% of Afghanistan, in the time of American rule, didn't remove their hijab. They gave the choice, and the overwhelming majority rejected the Western lifestyle. They say we give you the freedom of beliefs. You can believe whatever you want. You can be an atheist, a Satanist, whatever you want. It's free, alhamdulillah. Everyone can do, do as you please, say what you want, so long as you do and say what we tell you to say. You can't speak out against our ethics. You can't speak out against certain types of marriages or certain types of gender or what you want to wear. Those things are not acceptable. Freedom within our dictates of freedom. Subhanallah, in some countries, they are forcing to allow boys to go to school in, in skirts, but they won't allow a Muslim girl to wear hijab to school. The same enlightened world. You know, you know what I'm talking about. That people have the right to dress like they want, except the Muslim woman wants to wear hijab. No, no, you don't have that right. The feminist wants to tell you, you can do and be whatever you want. No one can tell you what to do, so long as you don't wear your hijab. I must tell you you can't wear hijab. You, no matter what CEO you are, a judge, how qualified you are in the world, your hijab is backwards, and you don't have the capacity to know what is right or wrong. Look at the, just look at, understand the subhanAllah. They accuse us of keeping our women backward, of depriving them of, of, of being empowered. Yet they are the ones that are preventing our sisters from going to school and university because of the, their choices in attire, subhanAllah. Who is really oppressing women then, subhanAllah? When you deprive someone of education, when you deprive someone of access to learning, the girls come to university and the doors are locked, take your hijab off or you can't learn. Now we really ask, who, is, who really cares about our sisters and the well-being of women? And so this shows you clearly where we stand and where they stand. Don't be fooled. And there are many of us that are fooled with Western ideology that it's, it's better for us. We need to get, we f fall into that narrative that they are our saviors. They are coming to, they're coming to save us. They're coming to civilize us. Like they said 300 years ago, too, when they came to our continent, they're not here for us. They're here to export. It's a type of colonization and it's a type of subjugation. And so our sisters, this is not just about a duki. It is a type of jihad now. Your hijab is a type of jihad. And it's not one that we can fight as men. Imams giving khutbas, you know, academics writing books and papers, it's meaningless. What really counts and stands 
is when our sisters, you choose to wear that hijab. When you show them that I will succeed in my... It's so beautiful when you see the top performers academically are Muslim sisters and she wears that hijab. That she takes the prize. I came first in maths or whatever with my hijab on. When she walks in that boardroom and she dictates in that boardroom, but she wears a scarf as well, the dukis with. That my Islam empowers me. My hijab gives me strength. I decide what I want to wear. Not because my dad told me to do so, or my, my brothers forced me to do it, my husband forced me to do it, but because my Rob tells me to do it. You know the idea that it is my body, my choice. It is your body, but Allah's law. In fact, it's Allah's body. And all of us, that's what it means to be a Muslim. We make Islam. We submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to the laws of men. Not to the dictates of the patriarchy, but to the dictates of the Sharia. Because our Rabb said that. And so Allah says to our sisters, Allah says to our sisters, Kullil mu'minat. Oh, tell the believing women, if you have iman, يَغْدُدْنَ min abasarihin. Then lower your gaze. You be modest within yourself. وَيَحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُنْ And protect your private parts. وَلَا يَبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا And cover up your body except what is necessary to be shown. And we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We have 1,500 years of ulama who understood the Arabic language. What does this mean? And as we said, the vast majority, or basically they've all said, hands may be uncovered, the face may be uncovered, and in some madhabs the feet may also be uncovered. They said this is necessary. This is what is required. Everything else is awrah, sisters, in public. Everything else needs to be covered. Not because the imam said so. Not because the MJC said so. But this is what Rabbukum al-A'la, your Lord, said so. The one who made you. And then he says, Subhanallah. You find these uh, people and, and they just want to cause mischief, whether it's deliberate or just purely ignorant. They'll say, show me in the Quran where it says the hijab, you must wear the hijab. Now it's true, the word hijab doesn't come in the Quran. Allah says, use your humor. What is humor? Humor sounds like khamar, right? Sounds like khamar. What is khamar? Khamar is called khamar because it covers your head. It closes your head. It makes you drunk. So Allah says, oh ladies, take your khumr, the thing which closes your head. Take your head scarf and pull it over your front. In the past, they would wear the duki. This is the non-Muslim women, not the Muslim women. They would wear their dukis and it would be in the back and their chest would be open. Allah says, no, when you wear your duki, cover the front part. That's better for you. And don't let your adornments, your beauty be shown except to your husbands, your fathers, and then Allah lists all the people who are permissible to see other parts of your body. But for anyone else, this is the laws of the Sharia. And I said, sisters, when you make that choice now, I know in Cape Town, subhanAllah, you might say, I wear my dukki, I don't wear my dukki, on my neck, half of my head. It's my fashion choice. It's not about colonization and rejecting Islam and feminism. You might feel that way, subhanAllah. And I know that's how you feel. But in reality, this is what is at stake at the rest of the world. Alhamdulillah, we live in a society where we don't have those issues and may never come here. But understand, that decision that you make, has a statement and it's a powerful statement to the people outside of of our religion that when you show that I am a strong powerful woman and I wear my hijab proudly and I make my salah in public and I come to the masjid on Jumu'ah not because I'm inferior or I'm forced to do so but because this is what I want to do it tells them something completely different like Ramadan and we all know Ramadan subhanallah when we don't fast I mean, when we fast rather we don't eat and drink and we say we do this not because anyone is forcing me they look at us with admiration. Subhanallah. You do it because you aspire to a higher power. Allah says, and look at this ayah, O oh sisters. Ya ayyuan nabi, O oh nabi. Allah says to the nabi, Say to your wives and your daughters, Wa nisa'il mu'mineen. And to all the believing women, Yudanina alayhinna min jalabihinna, min jalabibihinna. Take your outer garment, your cloak, and cover your body with it. Wear something and cover your body. ذَلِكَ adna. This is better for you. أَنْ يَعْرَفْنَ SubhanAllah, why? Allah says that you may be recognized. Not that you may be hidden. Allah says, this is better, sisters, so you may stand out. So that when everyone is in, I don't want to say what, weighing nothing, and you are standing with your hijab, it shows you making, you making a statement with your hijab. Allah says that, not so that you may be hidden, that you may be obscure, that we don't see you, that you may stand out and you may have a sense of dignity. فَلَا يُؤْذِينَ And you will not be persecuted. And Allah says, and this will protect you. This will give you a kind of strength. Now, sisters, I want you, we're going to show a video of what's happening in India. A sister that was coming into her, so to give context of the video, she's coming into the university, she's wearing a hijab, and 
Look what's going on. Let's just see, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the video. Hope it plays. So you see the sister is coming in on a motorbike to, to Varsity, coming to hand in assignment. Obviously, he's calling to her, take off your hijab. You're not supposed to go in the university with hijab. And her response is, so what she's saying is, what right do you have to tell me what to wear? Who are you to tell me to take off my, my hijab? And the thugs of, 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 uh, of, of men trying to force her, the Hindu, it's also, uh, there's a Hindu issue there in India, as we know, a persecution against Islam. So she goes to class. I want to ask you, does that girl look like she needs to be liberated? You need to send an army to protect her from her ulama and her fathers. Does she look like she needs your liberation? And do those men, do they look like they're to liberate her? They're there to save her, to protect her, those thugs. Now, subhanAllah, as I said, sisters, this is a fight that you, I can't fight. And the Muslim, the Jama'a here, we can't wear our hijab. Right? We, we have our own battles to do. But this is your battle. And the choice you make, it's really the choice for the, the, it's one of the symbols of Islam now. Hijab has become like the Kaaba, like Makkah, like the Quran, a symbol, a sha'air. It is a symbol of what it means to be a Muslim. A symbol of, there is no other religion. Every other group has basically given in. To that pressure of Western, Western domination, secularism. It is only our Muslim women that still stand firm. And what's beautiful, they say in the 60s and 70s, when a lot of, when the West was more involved in the, in the countries, in the governments, if you look at how universities were, even a place like Turkey, it was illegal for a lady to go to. Turkey, you couldn't go to university with hijab in a Muslim country. Now you go to the so same West, those countries, Egypt, Turkey, and the hijab has come back. Once the, 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 the pressure was taken off, and the choice was made, our sisters made the choice. We're doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're doing this out of our, our iman, our iman. And as one scholar, and I conclude with this, just weeks after a conference where they said, the European country said, how can you live in a society where you cover your face? The whole world will collapse. Allah sent a plague where everyone now is in niqab. And Allah showed, Allah showed that even the men will cover their face. Allah alam if there's any link between that. But Allah showed that argument that if you cover your face and you cover your head, you can't function in society. There's no place for you in society. You, those same people themselves, every day are forced to wear that, that, that face covering. May Allah grant us strength. May Allah bring Izzah to this Ummah. May Allah protect our women, our children, the men throughout the Ummah. May Allah grant us to find that we have, we return to the days where it, we have pride to be a Muslim. May Allah keep us safe. A few announcements, quite a few announcements. Alhamdulillah, our series Islam from Scratch. Um, we're talking about the very essence of Islam. We ask everyone to, to log on and to, to our YouTube. If you can't join live on a Thursday evening at half past six, it is on our YouTube channel and you can, you can watch the, the content. Next week, very wonderful uh, topic about who is Allah. When you think of him, who is he? Everyone should really log in. Then um, in March, I know they say Feb is the month of love, but March here in Buranil is the month of love. We're doing the road to Nikah. And this is a bit uh, different to what we've done. We have certain group sessions where we'll talk about the thick of marriage. We'll talk about communication, your personality types. We'll bring a therapist in. And also, if you want, we can have one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions. We can draft your nikah contract as well. And so if you want any further information, you can contact us. And uh, for those who are looking to get married, we also make dua for uh, Professor Ibrahim Arnold. SubhanAllah, it's been one year that he passed away. SubhanAllah, how quickly a year has gone. One, one of our stalwarts in our community in the book up, we ask Allah to grant him genital firdaus. To grant him and all the marhum uh, uh, um, forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy upon his family. Um, we also would like to uh, announce that we have our Burhanu market day. So the 5th of March, the 5th of March, alhamdulillah, the Buka treats for the year is being launched. Um, it's strange, we launch a cookbook for Ramadan. But we have our, our uh, ma uh, um, market day, Ramadan market day at, uh, on the 5th of March. It will be there at the hub. 
and um, we will have, I think there's a Dalchi competition or something like that. So we ask all of you to, to attend, insha'Allah, and, and support bi idnillah. Jazakallah khair wa sallallahu sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh.